Well, hi there, and welcome to another episode of Hey, What's Next? This past week, while visiting the Micro Center website, an alert appeared stating that the local store had the Raspberry Pi monitor in stock. Well, I jumped on it and picked one up. While I already have a portable monitor that I've used a few times on this channel, the Raspberry Pi monitor had two specific features that sold me. One, the adjustable monitor stand, and two, the full-size HDMI port. As a bonus, it has this small opening on the bottom, and that should make it easier for cabling. And as a second bonus, it should look awesome when connected to my Pi 400. Well, does it live up to my expectations? The new Raspberry Pi monitor. This is what's next. Well, on this channel, I have used the Pixio portable monitor, 15 inch, model number PX160. And this has done me pretty well. Uh, but recently, Raspberry Pi brought out their monitor. And here it is in the box, plain looking box, but that's fine. It's cardboard, it's got a monitor in it. Let's take a look at the box here. It's red and white, 15.6 inch, 1080p. We see that it is the Raspberry Pi monitor. And I got this at Micro Center for $99.99. You can see there's our Micro Center sticker. On the bottom, we have the Raspberry Pi logo. Basically, same information on the side. Some additional shipping information on this side. And then here we have some of our specs. So again, integrated adjustable angle stand. That was one of the things that sold me on this particular unit due to the fact that the other monitor, the Pixio, doesn't. It's just one angle. Built-in audio via two speakers. And then uh, the full-size HDMI input. Again, huge bonus there. USB-C power cable included. And then nothing on the back. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. No tape, it just opens right up other than the Micro Center tag right here to the side. We'll get that out and here you go. Yes, I already opened it and that logo is backwards. So it should come in like that, but there is the monitor. And then we have the information booklet, which I'll look at in a second. And as promised, here is our USB-A to USB-C connection and that's it nothing else in the box so let's go ahead and get rid of that let's get this opened and there you go there is the monitor itself we have the two speakers up front we have kind of a rubberized feet down here at the bottom we flip this over and it's red and then you notice the controls over here we have volume brightness and power and that's it located under the kickstand here if we can get this undone this pops open like so and there are your connections full size hdmi the usb c for power and headphone uh, speaker out now obviously this has been designed to probably closely be a companion piece to the pi 400 and the pi 500 but again, the nice thing about this was the stand. So the stand allows you to go in really any angle that you want. Where uh, on the Pixio, that's it. That's all you get. Um, or you could do it flat, but primarily that's the angle that you can get out of that one. But again, with this one, you can go really at any angle uh, both monitors again they're basically the same size what would give it be interesting is just to see what the quality is between a monitor that was manufactured in october of 2020 and this particular monitor here which i'm going to assume was manufactured in just the last several months so what else should we know about this monitor so here's our manual for the monitor 
they call it a booklet. This is some information here, and we have additional specifications and other features here. But what I wanted to point out is the fact that if you do hook this up to the Raspberry Pi, as shown here in this diagram, you only get a maximum of 60% brightness and 50% volume. The only way that you could then get the most brightness and the loudest volume is only if it is powered uh, by itself, uh, separately from the Raspberry Pi. So that is something to keep in mind when you are using this monitor with a Raspberry Pi, or I'm gonna assume really any uh, standard USB connection uh, that you would get with a laptop or whatnot. So knowing that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna power both of these monitors separately we're going to adjust the camera angle and we're going to get an idea of kind of what is the difference between let's say a hundred dollar monitor compared to one that costs about 170 two years ago and is there any difference improvements are they the same let's find out before we go testing these two monitors with the raspberry pi i wanted to show the specs of each monitor so on the Raspberry Pi website, if I scroll down, we can see the specifications here. We already know that it is a 15.6 inch full HD 1080p display. It's an IPS panel with an anti-glare coating, 16.2 million colors, 250 nits brightness typical. And then the rest of the other information is down here in regards to the audio and it's a full size HDMI and it's got a VES amount. So um, 1.5 amps at five volts is the power supply. And of course it talks about the max brightness. Now, if we go to the Pixio PX160, we notice that again, we have a full HD display at 1920 by 1080, 60 Hertz refresh rate, same brightness. The max is 250 nits. Now this one does support HDR um, and uh, IPS panel. The ratio is 500 to 1. Now, I don't believe we saw a ratio here for the contrast. Nope, do not see it. If you happen to know the contrast ratio for this Raspberry Pi monitor, leave a comment down below. In general, fairly comparable specs for both monitors. All right, we have both monitors connected up to the Raspberry Pi. I haven't turned anything on yet because I'm also going to introduce you to the PAL Diem. This is a 99 watt hour battery, 140 watt output. It has two USB connections. Both are able to do 140 watts out and 140 watts in. We're going to do a more in-depth review on this, but I thought this was a great opportunity to, you know, try this out and see how well this one works with these two monitors. We're gonna plug in the Raspberry Pi through the USB-A port, and you're gonna see it does give us a reading of what that port is putting out. And then over here, we're going to plug in the anchor, and that's gonna power this monitor here. And then we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna plug in our Raspberry Pi. Now, first off, you're gonna notice that one of the advantages with the Raspberry Pi monitor is that it has this little cutout down here, so you can run the cables through there. And then uh, with the Pixio, all the connections are on this side. So right off the bat, I'm noticing that this monitor is a little bit brighter than that one. So we're seeing a little bit more brightness over here. So let me go in the back. Uh, one of the nice things, and actually it's on the other side, is that the power button and the brightness and all those controls, you can actually feel a tactile feel here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna raise up the brightness. Now, because of this, it is only giving me 60% because I'm limited based off of this. Um, so, not a true fair comparison here. Let me plug it into the other port. I should have an extra cable. Give me one moment. All right, so I found another USB-C cable. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna power off this monitor. We're gonna unplug this. And I can show you on the back. 
here where that connection is at. So if we look here, that's the only thing. It's a very plasticky unit. It's one thing I did notice. You obviously have the VESA mount or VESA mount. I always call it VESA. I've heard other people say VESA. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. And I'm going to find my other cable that I brought over right here. And we're going to plug that in. Now this will do 140 watts out. So hopefully we're not going to be limited by the power now. There we go. And let me get the power. We're going to plug this into the other USB-C connection. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this monitor on. Okay, now we should be able to go much brighter. That should be the second control. And there we go. So as far as the monitor here, uh, it's about the same based off of what I'm seeing. Obviously the one thing is that now I, this is, uh, okay. So I'm not showing, I need to get this so that it's on both screens at the same time. So give me one moment. Okay, while not exactly the way I wanted it, I do have the same page on both monitors. You're gonna notice that this one has a little bit wider bright. This is a little bit more dim. Uh, but overall, the quality is still decent. I, if I didn't have both of these connected, probably would be fine uh, for me. Uh, again, some of the advantages with this one is the speakers are front facing as opposed to the Pixio, which they're on the back. Uh, advantages with the Pixio, you could just run with the single USB-C cable, uh, both video and power, where this will require the HDMI and uh, the USB powered separately. This is a decent monitor. Uh, this is the first experience. I haven't really played around with this that much. I will be planning on using this monitor quite a bit for testing other video equipment. So overall, I love the quality. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of the Pixio right now. We're gonna just use the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna test the audio. All right, so we have the monitor connected back up, running the cables through the bottom. Again, one of the key advantages to this unit compared to let's say that Pixio and other ones that I've seen. Uh, the downside with this monitor is it doesn't have that cover that the Pixio does. So I'm a little concerned that I will probably scratch the heck out of this monitor, which means I will probably keep the packaging <laughs> that it came in and use that to store the monitor when it's not in use. Now, one of the other things that we talked about was the speakers. And so I have a sample YouTube library. I'm just going to play just a couple seconds of this and it'll give you an idea of what the sound quality is going to be. I wouldn't expect anything too audiophile quality. It'll be tinty. These speakers are tiny, but again, they're forward facing. So that will allow for at least the sound getting to the end user or whoever's sitting behind the keyboard uh, a little bit better than let's say other monitors that have them towards the back. So here we go, let's just gonna play a little bit of this. Keep in mind, I have this now plugged into the Raspberry Pi using the official Raspberry Pi power adapter in the back. And we are limited to only 60% brightness and 50% volume. But again, the point I believe that Raspberry Pi is wanting is that this is kind of a self-contained unit, right? One final item. I knew some of you out there would be posting a question about, well, can the Raspberry Pi power the Pixio monitor? So currently right now it's connected up to a power station off to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. This is currently set to 80%. I'm going to plug it in here and you're going to notice it will not stay on. There's not enough power coming from the Raspberry Pi 400 to power the Pixio monitor. So now we know why we're being limited to 60% brightness and, or 50, yeah, 60% brightness and 50% sound on the Raspberry Pi monitor. So this is just my quick overview of the new Raspberry Pi 15.6 inch 1080p monitor Let's take it back to the studio for my final thoughts. So, what are my thoughts on this monitor? 
I love that adjustable monitor stand. That is definitely a feature I wish I had with that Pixio portable monitor, which leads me to something I just realized, uh, the viewing angle. This Raspberry Pi monitor's viewing angle is really good. Going side to side didn't seem to wash out the image badly. The big advantage is that full-size HDMI connection. This will be perfect with other video-related items I want to demonstrate in some future episodes. Now, will future Raspberry Pi single board computers include full-size HDMI connections? I guess we'll have to wait and see. So, what are some downsides? When it comes to picture adjustments, the Pixio monitor is way better. That monitor includes adjustments, not just to brightness, but contrast and color along with built-in color profile presets. The other area that shines are those extra connections, the two USB-Cs. However, the Pixio's lack of the full-size HDMI connection, that's a bummer, and that makes the Raspberry Pi monitor the winner, in my opinion. In short, if you're looking for a well-built portable monitor, or you're already a fan of Raspberry Pi, I think you'll find the new Raspberry Pi monitor to be a good choice. Well, I hope you found today's topic helpful and informative. If you liked what you saw, could you take a moment and give me a thumbs up? Don't forget to share this video with others. To have my channel appear in your feed, click that subscribe button and bell notification icon. Until next time, feel free to watch one of my other videos either here or here. And until next time, I'll see you again for another episode of Hey, What's Next?